An oak tree like this is barely big enough to saw into boards. It's about 13, 14 inches in diameter, has about 40 board feet in it. And to cut a tree like this, you have to have a really good reason to do so. Like if it were sick, or if the stand were overcrowded, or I hate to say it, if the landowner really needed the money. Here's one that's more in line of the average size of the average sale that I do. It's got about 180 board feet in it. Uh, it's reached something of an economic age and hopefully it has some seedlings and saplings coming up underneath it to replace it once it's cut down. A tree like this is starting to get to the size where it'll impress loggers. It has about 450 board feet. It's definitely on the upper end of the bell curve to a New York lumberman. When I send out a bid sheet, the first thing a prospective buyer will do is divide the footage by the tree counts to get the average size. If the average size is too small, many guys won't bother to go look at it. When the average size reaches ones like this, the buyer will almost certainly go look at it. If anything, just to admire an impressive piece of timber. So in the past 33 years, I've seen timber sales that are superlative in one way or another. Things that stick out in a forester's memory are dazzling quality, sky-high board footages per acre, dry, flat, gravelly ground with a short skid distance. The longer you stay at it, the more it takes to impress you. Yet, at a time where we're seeing more fragmentation of land parcels and vast die-offs from insect infestations, I still come across pieces that can swoon a lumberman's heart. I marked this sale last summer. The landowner's been here since 1982 and has done a wonderful job of land stewardship. It began by having a management plan written by a DEC forester. And here's the thing, he stuck to the plan. To go in and chainsaw girdle beech trees and malformed trees that are competing for space with your valuable oaks takes a commitment of either labor or money to hire somebody else to do the work. Then you need to have the patience to let the trees grow into the space you just gave them. This can be tough. Think of the economic issues that could spring up over the course of a decade or more. It's a logger's job to know where the good timber stands. And if you own good timber, I guarantee that everyone within two counties who owns a chainsaw will approach you to do a sale, tempting you with the promise of a big payday. Well, this landowner is stuck to his guns. He did one cutting about 20 years ago, under the auspices of a forester that has since retired. It must have been a very light harvest. What remains today is just extraordinary. I'm standing next to the biggest red oak in the woods. I marked it for sale, then the landowner asked me to blacken over my paint so he can keep it as a trophy tree. I scaled it at 2,200 board feet. It would take two of these to fill a semi-trailer. You don't find too many trees like this on private land. Most of my sales average ones less than one-tenth its size. In my career, I've scaled a few oaks that had more volume than this one. But you don't often see trees that get this huge while maintaining really good quality. But trees do experience decline as they get older. It'll show up as rotten heartwood like this one or broken tops and things like that. On this one, you just don't see obvious blemishes that would degrade the logs you'd get. So we left this one, but I did get to mark some real dandies. In here, I was constantly pacing off a chain and using my hypsometer to accurately get the log heights. For trees this colossal, you want to be very accurate. I even ran into some that went way off the end of my scale. I was out here pulling up volume calculating apps on my smartphone to record some of them. In the old days, I would have had to take down the height and diameter and crunch the numbers at home. So since the fate of a piece of land is tied to the goals and desires of the landowner, finding timber like this is rarely an accident. It gets large only when it's allowed to. When tree sizes go way off the charts, there's often a story that goes along with it. Wealthy landowners that don't need the income and don't welcome the change. Bachelor farmers who are too mistrustful of loggers to cut any at all. 
environmentalists who want the habitat and carbon sink, sentimental folks who want to keep their ties with ancestral woodlands. By the time I met this landowner, I found myself at the end of a four decade continuum of ownership and land management. I really needed to listen to what his goals were. He's in his 80s and knows there is some real dollar value standing. His family doesn't want to keep the land when it comes time to inherit it. Better to log it while the land's still under his control. Last summer we had a bad gypsy moth outbreak. The trees did grow some leaves back after the caterpillars were gone, but if the insects come back this spring we could experience some mortality. You have to consider that a salvage sale is an act of desperation. A buyer won't pay premium prices for a dead tree. And you'd be doing it at a time when all through western New York there may be thousands of landowners with dead trees begging for loggers to take them before the logs spoil, which may create a glut on the market. So selling it last summer was a gamble that we couldn't get a better market within the next few years. We talked at length before he satisfied himself with the decision and pulled the trigger. The crew will likely show up this summer. This winter it didn't freeze early enough to attempt getting a truck back here. This harvest will bring a rather stark change in the character of this woods, going from the park-like stand it is now to being quite open, with large tops lying around and brush quickly growing in afterward. But it's an end goal to 40 years of active planning. Doing a sale in this type of woods for this type of landowner is a privilege. I made this video for posterity to record what a really amazing piece of timber looks like, where the trees are six times older than a middle-aged man and can make a guy who stands six foot four feel minuscule. I want to be worthy of working in woods like this, for landowners like this.